Welcome back to another Learning Layer segment. We're joined again by Joe Kerrigan as he gets ready for his CISSP. So Joe, you, since last time we talked, you were making good momentum. Yep. You finished Domain 2 and you're on to Domain 3. I, so what do you, very different flavor of material, Domain 2 to Domain 3. Domain 3 is a little more technical. Yes. So how did that feel? I, I love the cryptography stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, that was all... Uh, very, very native to me. Yeah. Uh, there's not, first off, they're not teaching you how to be a cryptographer. Right, so right. Don't worry. You don't have to worry, understand how, uh, why factoring large prime, <laughs> prime large numbers. products of prime numbers is <laughs> NR. Yeah. You don't need to know that. Yeah. Uh, I, I, in fact, that's the only thing I really understand about uh, asymmetric cryptography sure. is sure. very large prime numbers multiplied together. Okay. Um, but, but uh, that's one one algorithm. And also, while, while we're on the topic, RSA. I remember that you're a crypto guy because when we talked about the diagnostic, maybe even for like the CC exam, you were mad because there's <laughs> technically a wrong answer choice I was, about... I was um, mad. Right. I was mad about a wrong answer on the CC exam that <laughs> I don't think should have been wrong. Right. Uh, and it was because it was, how do you ensure integrity? Uh, right. And they said, well, uh, you have the answer was hash. Right. Right. But if you just send a hash yeah. uh, and I intercept that message, I'm changing the hash as well. <laughs> so you have to encrypt that hash with your private yeah. key. Right. And right. that becomes the digital signature. Right. That exactly. So you need both. Exactly. You need and, a hash and a private key. They talk about that here. Right. Exactly. I, I was about to say, it's like, almost a perfect tie-in because those who might be studying along with Joe, you know, the, the reason why that it ensures non-repudiation is because, as you said, since this is encrypted with the sender's private key, right? What's the only thing in the world that could decrypt it? It's the sender's public key, which means it, it had to be encrypted by the the, the sender's uh, private key. And who's the only person in the world with sender's private key? The sender. The sender. That's how you know hopefully, it came from the person. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Hopefully. In theory, that's it, that's the way it is. And if somebody right. breaches your private keys, then yeah. that's a problem, of course. But. Yeah. Uh, Let's not assume that we're talking about that kind of error. We're talking about an error, you know, a situation where all the the key management is happening well and the 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 system yeah. is working as it should be. You're correct. That provides non-repudiation. So, Joe, what's interesting is you have a background in crypto. You're probably really strong on domain three. Yet you told me before we started recording that you watched all of the videos in the short video library and you watched the I longer did. videos. Yeah, this is the way I'm going through the course. So. Uh, that's fine. I, I will say it's probably, you know, not how most people do it. Okay. Um, which, again, whatever works for, for different people. But can you tell me about, I guess, just walk us through the, the, the difference between the short videos and the longer ones, and then maybe what you're getting from each when you go through it. Okay, so I'll tell you what I'm doing with each. Mm -hmm. um, first, with the short videos, I just have in my uh, Google Drive, I have mm -hmm. a series of notes files. Yep. For each domain. So, so far I have domains one, two, and three mm -hmm. as note files. And I'm going through these videos. This, they're in a, in a logical order. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there are multiple videos under a topic. And I'm just going through. And as I'm going through, I'm taking notes. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm probably generating at least five or six page of notes, pages of notes per domain. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's also kind of helping me as I learn through it. Once I get through the domain, uh, then I go and I look at the video that is, uh, you know, the, the, the lecture that talks about that domain. There's just okay. one, like usually one hour lecture mm -hmm. that goes over the content of the do domain. Yep. Um, and that is also paired with a book, mm -hmm. you know, a notebook that's in, in the, uh, in the materials mm -hmm. that I've printed out. Nice. And I'm, going through now with a piece of paper and a mechanical pencil, <laughs> writing nice. down things, notes in this yep. as well. Yep. So um, I don't have any sources on this, but I have educators who have told me, mm -hmm. so I'm going to believe the educators, okay. that writing things down with your hand and writing things down by typing them uh, are two different modalities. Yep. So 
you are going to uh, you're going to be using different parts of your brain, which means that you might have you, ha- you stand a better chance of recalling the data. So I'm mm-hmm. doing it twice mm-hmm. for that reason. I'm mm-hmm. not, yes, I'm going through all the material, and and you've said that that's not how most people use the use the course, but mm-hmm. that's how I'm using. It. <laughs> I'm, sure, you know, and I'm I'm if you know if you paid for the material, you might as well look at all of it, right? <laughs> But <laughs> well, the point I want to make about those videos is that since they are just, again, more of an overview of the domains, it pulls out all the most important testable material right. from the domain. Right. So it's almost like you're in the weeds with the short videos yep. in the video library, and then you zoom out a little bit and you see the whole forest and how things kind of you know come together and, and all the connections across the domain on all the stuff that is really important for the exam. Right. So if we harken back to domain one, we mm-hmm. start talking about the risk management and, mm-hmm. and quantified risk management. There's all those formulas back there mm. that I, frankly, I need to sit through those lectures. Sure. Because those were very helpful. And, and once you've seen those lectures, it's very intuitive. Yeah, sure. Um, and I thought that the cryptography lectures were also uh, helpful to go through things, even though I, I, I already knew a lot of the stuff that yep. was in there. Yeah, it, well, exactly. And, and another point is that, like, you basically want to bank time on the easy questions. Like, on exam day, you want to answer the ones that you know really well as quickly as possible, right? Right. So that when you're struggling or wrestling between two answer choices, you have a little bit extra time to kind of make that decision. So basically, by really owning your strengths, it actually lets you go faster on test day, which helps you with your weaker areas. Yes. So, Joe, I would normally end the episode by asking you if you have any content questions about domain three of what you studied, but... I should be asking you because you're the expert. (laughs) So we'll just end it there. Uh, We look forward to uh, continuing uh, your journey and learning next time about Domain 4. 